We are back. This is part two with JT Horenstein. What advice would you give someone that's like newly moving to the city? Like what's something that you wish you would have known like going into this industry? The advice that I would give to people is if there's any other career, any other passion that you have at all that you could do for the rest of your life, do that and don't do this because this is rough. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're gonna do this, know that it has to be your one only primary thing. This isn't something to dabble in. This is something you dedicate your life to and it's something that you do because there is nothing else that's gonna make you happy. So I would say, A, wanna be here and wanna do this. B, do your freaking homework, people. Come here knowing things. Mm -hmm. No composers, no lyricists, no choreographers, no directors, know the people that are currently working, know the shows that you think that you could be in, know the roles that you think you could be good for. Don't just come here blindly thinking like, I'm gonna go and sing and dance and somebody's <laughs> gonna like make me famous. Mm -hmm. The first thought should be, how am I going to move there? How am I going to afford it? Where am I going to live? And how, how am I going to set up my life so I can feel financially, mentally, emotionally, and physically safe? Mm -hmm. Those are the first things I think that you should think of. Have your audition book ready to go. Mm -hmm. Come here knowing that there are a few dance teachers that you really want to take from because of technique and because it's going to make you a better dancer. And then also know that there are a few dance teachers you're going to take from because they're the ones working and auditioning. And if you eventually get to be moved to the front of their class and they recognize you, you'll be somebody that they can eventually cast in one of their professional shows. So take dance classes for both reasons. I feel like for vocal classes um, and vocal coachings and putting more audition music together, go to the most talented person that you can find um, and somebody that vibes with you, somebody that speaks your language, and somebody that sees something in you that you don't even see in yourself. You need to keep inspiring these skills um, all, all the while through your auditioning and even while you're performing. I think that you can always, as a performer, better yourself. I find the most difficult environment to operate in this business is New York. It's also the most rewarding, yeah. depending on what your goals are, but um, I don't mean to scare anybody away because we want new talent and new young people that are motivated, that have the integrity to keep this business alive and what it should be, mm -hmm. to be here. But you really need to be realistic about it and you need to have your parents or your guardians or whoever is gonna help you out on the same page so they really know what this is. Mm -hmm. And they're not going into it blindly either saying, oh, well, my daughter was the lead of everything in Dubuque, Iowa. But that's Dubuque, Iowa. No offense to there, but the talent pool here is bigger. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more competition. And just because you were the hometown hit doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna happen to you here. It's like a balance of being realistic and optimistic at the same time. Yeah, I mean, you don't wanna be pessimistic because that just defeats the purpose of waking up every day. Yeah. But, but having that optimism, and then matching that, like you said, with the realism is a really good way to approach this. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. Oh, wow, I love you so much. I knew that you were gonna- I love you so much. <laughs> if you missed it, go back to part one of this video where JT talks about booking Broadway. <laughs>